Hi there, this is Alana. You are listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. And I am joined with Jamie, my co-host. We're really glad you joined us today. We're going to be having what we hope will be just an encouraging and inspiring discussion about how to pray more during the day without necessarily having to take time out of your schedule, but just being more mindful of prayer throughout the day. So especially if you find it hard to connect with God and you have a busy schedule, this definitely is an episode for you. So before we jump into it, let's start with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you that you're present with us everywhere that we go and no matter what we're doing, that that you're accessible to us, that you're near to us and we can call out to you at any point in time. We just pray that you would inspire us and help us just to become more mindful of the cracks and crevices of our day that can um, just have prayer saturating them. And and we just thank you that um, that you're going to do that in Jesus name. Amen. Our verse of the day is Psalm 145, 18, and it says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. And I just love that and feel like um, it encapsulates what we're talking about today. Um, we're all busy. We all have a lot going on, but, but God is near to us throughout the day. And all we have to do, I just think of these, um, these prayers that we throw out to God as like shout out prayers. We just kind of throw them out there throughout our day as we need him. Um, as we have a spare moment, we can just, we don't have to be in our prayer closet for hours at a time. We can just do the shout out prayers. And so I thought this Psalm where the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth is, is just really applicable. Yeah, I love that. You know, it kind of hearkens or, you know, beckons us to think about just God's omnipresence, which I feel is almost foundational to what we're going to be talking about. You know, that even in our busy days, God is there with us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about ways to just sort of invite God into our our day-to-day routines. So, yeah. I'm excited about that. Well, one of the things we're going to be talking about is prayer reminders, and we'll get into that in just a sec, but on the subject of reminders, our just for fun question is, have you ever forgotten something really important? And if so, what happened? Very recently, I forgot something that was, it doesn't sound that important, but it was really important. So my kids, my three kids this year, all three of them are on hockey teams, and my middle son was at kind of an evaluation. He was going to an evaluation where the coaches were going to watch and decide if he was going to be on the upper level team or the lower level team of his age group. And he's on the line age wise. So he should be in the lower level group, but if he performed well enough, he might have been bumped up. And so I, for an entire week, I knew that I was supposed to get his skates sharpened. And this is just something, and I even said to my husband in kind of a prideful way, like, well, yeah, I'm going to do that. Cause he, he kind of asked me, well, are you going to remember to do this? I know you've been really busy. And I said, yeah, I'm going to remember, you know, duh. And so the day of my son's hockey tryout thing came and I was, I, it, it didn't even occur to me that I hadn't gotten his skates sharpened. And I even packed both skates thinking, because he, anyway, it's, it's a long story, but he had one pair that was sharpened, but too small. And another pair that were his newer ones that I was supposed to get sharpened. I even packed both of them because I was thinking, oh yeah, maybe he'll want to use the other ones. Um, but it was an epic fail because I got there. Aww. And as I was getting his skates on, I thought, wait a second he can't wear these smaller ones and the other ones are not sharpened. So that was, that was a very bad. Yeah. It 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 impact his audition. It impacted his skating. And, you know, I think he's that he ended up being in the lower level group. I think he's in the right level. And, and my husband and I were even talking about it recently that he's one of the better skaters in his level and that's mm-hmm. inspiring him and right. he's having a great time and it's all worked out fine, but I still feel bad. <laughs> uh, well, um, a few years ago we did this little experiment. So we've always homeschooled, but for a little bit we homeschooled in the morning and the kids went to the public school in the afternoon and they got to do like their electives and stuff. 
Um, and there were some really good things that came out of it, but I, to be honest, like I'm kind of glad we're back to just homeschooling now, but we would bring them right at lunchtime. And Jamie, you know this, but my youngest son has had just major tummy issues. And especially before we got his wheat allergy diagnosed, like he was just, he went through phases where like he could only eat four or five things. Like it was really, really sad. And the school was aware of this for sure. And like, I would have to send him with really bland lunches. Like there were like for over a month, he was yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you don't need to get into all the diet details, but it was during a time where he was on a lot of food restrictions and I dropped them off at school, realized, well, I didn't realize it, but he forgot his lunch in the car and I didn't have my phone with me. And so he couldn't, you know, like run to the office and call me real quick to turn around and go back. And so it was like five or 10 minutes later when I got home that the school finally got in touch with me and like, Hey, he doesn't have his lunch. We tried to find something here, you know what I mean? Like that he could eat and we just couldn't. So, you know, I went back and I felt bad. But the, the cute part of the story is the principal was super sweet and she knew all about his allergies. And so she said, okay, why don't you tell me again, like remind me what you're allergic to and let's see if we can find something for you to eat. <laughs> and my poor little boy, he looks or he was totally serious. And he says, it would be easier if I just told you what I can eat oh, <laughs> instead of running through the whole list of what he couldn't eat. Oh. <laughs> so especially given that, I felt really bad. Um, you know, if it was one of his older brothers and they just forgot their lunch in the car, it kind of would have been a, okay, too bad. <laughs> but with him, you know, like, oh, there are so few things he could eat to begin with. So, yep, totally get just that sense of feeling guilty. Yes. And, yeah. But that's a good segue, really, into what we're going to be talking about because it's Ooh, so that was nice. Important. Segue away. It's it's important to know what uh, to to not go into this with guilt, you know. I, and we say this over and over, but it's because it's so common to feel guilty about prayer, mm -hmm. and that just robs prayer of its joy. And so, just right now, let go of any guilt you're feeling because these, you know, things that we're going to be talking about are just um, ways that you can um, move forward by, by placing good stuff in your life and good, yeah. good prayer routines and reminders into your life, not trying to guilt yourself into, you know, feeling like you have to pray more. I think it's a perspective yeah. shift. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Guilt is a really bad motivator. <laughs> not looking <laughs> well, at what you're not doing. Yeah. But what you can be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that we we were able to start off with this. So let's talk about, you know, we, we sort of already, already threw out the term of a prayer reminder. So what we're talking about in a prayer reminder is something that, okay, let me back up a tiny bit. If you're talking about starting a new habit, a lot of experts recommend that you tie that habit to something else. So for example, um, our church went through a program years ago where we were all doing the read the Bible in a year plan. And I didn't want to get behind. And so I just made a commitment that I wasn't going to check my email until I had done my Bible reading for the day because I never really needed a reminder to check my email. Like that was something that I just, I wanted to do. It was one of the first things I did after breakfast. And so Knowing that I had to do my Bible reading before I checked my email, I kind of linked these two things. One was something I was already in the habit of doing, you know, so, so for example, like maybe you want to get into the habit of writing in your journal every night. And so you link that to brushing your teeth because you're already hopefully in the habit of brushing your teeth at night, you know, stuff like that. So what we're talking about is linking reminders to pray with things that you're already naturally doing. So that's what we're talking about with the prayer reminder. And I feel like the concept of a prayer reminder, if you're not familiar with it, really, it, it's probably easiest to get what we're talking about just by example, don't you think? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So what are some prayer reminder examples, maybe either that you've heard of or that you or your family do, Jamie? Well, my husband, we had a sermon at church and it was just talking about the importance of praying for your kids. And so he literally set a reminder and I, I don't know how he did it. I don't know what it's linked to, but it must be like our iCloud or something because I get the reminders too. Oh, funny. <laughs> and it just pops up and it just says kids. And 
it just is a reminder for us. So you're talking about like a reminder on your phone, on right? On my phone yeah. or I, I guess my iPad that's linked to my oh, phone, right. like anything that's linked to your iCloud. Um, don't ask me how to set it up, but my husband did it. <laughs> and, um, and so it, so it pops up on our phones and on our iPads, whatever. Um, and it just says kids and it's just a reminder to pray for our kids. And I thought that was really neat. Um, that is cool. I've it, got a prayer reminder linked with technology too. So for me, um, I actually don't do it as much anymore, but I went through a season where I was really disciplined about when I waited for my computer to load up you know, that I, I would go through, I had this like mini routine where I would pray for the people who were going to be reading what I was going to be writing that day, you know, and yeah, every day I start at my computer. <laughs> and so it just sort of opened up my work time in prayer. And I love that because you took something that usually is a frustration because I think well, it in can our be, yeah. day, we you want it ready. ready. Yeah. yeah. And so my husband can't stand red lights. I just, I'm kind of oblivious. I'm like, if I'm in the car, I feel like I'm resting and I'm happy to just be uh -huh. sitting there and not have to do something, but, um, or talk to the kids or something. But my husband is such a focused driver. He's an amazing yeah. driver, but he hates red lights and fine. And I mean, every time we hit a red light, he's talking about how awful the red light is. Uh -huh. If you hate red lights or like I'm with you with the, the computer booting up and me hearing it grinding and doing all its weird noises and not wanting to. Yeah, my computer doesn't noise. grind. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe I have a problem. I that checked out. It doesn't have to do with prayer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever you're doing, if it's something that causes you stress because you have to wait for it, that's a perfect opportunity to pray. And I'm thinking for those of you out there that don't like red lights, use that as a prayer reminder and just maybe even have a list in your car of, you know, different people that, that you can be praying for or something That's on your great, dashboard yeah. or just on the top of your head. Like who are the people that are most important that you want to pray for and pray for one each time you hit a red light and yeah, then you might, and some red lights, you might get through two or three if they're the ones oh, my husband okay. really can't stand. You know, my, my son is like that when we get stopped at construction, like he oh. actually gets anxious and antsy and like, it's kind of funny. Like we sort of tease about it, but like there are times where he can get really, really upset if we have to stop at construction. And we're like, dude, this is Alaska. Construction happens. No, I can sense that like, um, claustrophobia that you can feel like a trapped feeling. Uh, I, I, I kind of feel that with jersey walls that help, that that I feel that way but especially when I get stopped by a construction person it's almost like a claustrophobic like I'm not in control you can't of go where I'm going. I can't go anywhere. Yeah. I can Okay. That actually helps me feel more sympathetic because I, I feel that way sometimes when we used to get um we used to live by those train tracks yeah. and you know, it didn't happen very often, but yeah, you don't know how long it's going to take for the train. You know, you don't know how long it's going to be. So yeah, I could see that. Okay. So we've got several trains, red lights, construction, <laughs> stops, pray. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, and computers, which are not <laughs> supposed to grind. <laughs> They're not, but take advantage of your old crotchety computer and oh, pray while funny. it's grinding its way into restarting or whatever. Well, and you know what prayer reminder, I feel like a lot of families are good at is just praying before a meal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see this as a very, um, like this is the epitome of a prayer reminder mm -hmm. because it's something you do every day. And it's, you know, a lot of us are just ingrained. You don't have to think about it. You know, you just jump into it. We used to do that back when we lived in the city and we were driving around a lot. You know, we also would just start our trips wherever we were going with just a short prayer. And, and it didn't have to be this big production. You know, it could be as simple as, you know, hey, thanks that we get to go hang out with Miss Jamie and our kids. Help us have a great time. <laughs> Yeah, but those are good habits, you know, because yes. that's so much of this is just forming good habits. And, mm -hmm. and it really is just being able to, to associate those things. I, with my kids, um, they'll go to bed and my husband and I usually stay up later, but just before I go to bed, I always make the rounds and check on them and, you know, just see how they're doing. And I use that as a prayer reminder. And I just pray oh, for each one of them just before I leave them for the night. And so that's just something I know that I'm going to do anyway. And so might as well make that a little like a prayer reminder. 
To do I that. used to do that back when the kids were little enough that they needed me to brush their teeth. Yeah. Is I would um, I would actually pray out loud for them while they were getting their for teeth brushed. Time period when you're yep exactly it was there you know they're two for one you get your teeth clean and you get prayed for. <laughs> That's really good. I like that. I think prayer reminders can be even more effective when they're sort of tied. So for example, like if there's an actual natural association, just like when I would start up my computer, I would be praying for the people who were going to read what I was writing that day. Or I know of several people who every time they see an ambulance go by, mm -hmm. they just, you know, they don't stop driving, but they stop whatever they're thinking about and just pray for whatever is going on right there. Um, so I think especially on the road, you know, it doesn't have to even be a red light. Like maybe you pass the hospital every day or maybe your route takes you by a school. Those can be prayer reminders to just be praying for, you know, whoever's in the hospital or the students and teachers at the school. We had a route back in the city where we would pass our church and, you know, that was a reminder to pray for our church. Yeah. And like when I get the paper in the morning, we get it a few days a week. And when I get the paper, um, there were, I've, I've gone back and forth on this. I really want to support the newspaper because I know it's a dying you mm -hmm. know, institution. And so right. we, we go back and forth, but we get it a few days a week now and I get it. And I, for a long time, I would just, I, I would go days without reading it, but now I've made a habit. I take it out and I at least look at the headlines and I've been using that lately to be kind of a prompt for prayer. Like I'll yeah. go through and not pray for all of them, but just kind of go through some of the key things. If something stirs up, you know, mm -hmm. something in me, I'll take a yeah. minute and at least just, just do a quick prayer. And I'm not talking like sit down and pray. I'm like walking into the kitchen to start making coffee and I'm just scanning the headlines and just saying, God, please be with this person or, Oh man, Lord, help our government to blah, blah, blah. You know? So, right. Yeah. No, that's good. I feel like in Alaska, there have been a lot of really sad headlines lately. Oh, it's been you terrible, know? terrible. Yeah. Real lots yeah. of tragedies affecting families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a great idea. Or, you know, this one is um, dangerous because we all, well, not all, maybe, but you and I, Jamie, know how much of a time suck that social media can be. Yes. But it also can be an impetus to pray. You know, just scrolling through, seeing what people are up to, you know, praying for the friends who pop up, you know, so maybe you love Facebook and maybe your prayer reminder is whoever happens to be on the very top of your newsfeed. When you open up Facebook, you just say a quick prayer for them. And I like what you pointed out, Jamie, that it doesn't have to be a long thing. These are like the beauty of prayer reminders is they truly take no extra time out of your day. You know, they take a little extra mental energy, but they don't take extra time, which when you're really busy can be a great, great asset. <laughs> it can. And you know, with the Facebook thing, you know, or a text thing, like every once in a while, um, I'll get a text from someone, you know, will you, you know, will you pray for this or I'm going through a hard time, mm -hmm. whatever. And if you just kind of take that as a prompt, you can even write back, even just to say, I'm praying now. In the, or even on Facebook, if you come across yeah. and say, hey, every time I get on Facebook, I'm not going to scroll through until I pray for one person and let them know right. that or write out a prayer to them or something mm -hmm. to, to engage as well as just pray. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've talked about some of the benefits of using prayer reminders. One of them is that once it becomes a habit, you don't really have to think about it as much. Like I don't need to worry every day that I'm going to forget to brush my teeth before bed. <laughs> you know, I don't walk, wake up like, oh man, I hope I don't forget to brush my teeth tonight. I just knew it. You know, and so once these prayer reminders become habits, that's, that's one of the benefits. What are some of the other benefits of prayer reminders? I think it's just, um, you know, like Brother Lawrence in the practice of the presence of God right. uh -huh. you know, and, and going back to our scripture about God being near to all, just, um, it, it's just, it shifts your mindset and, and it just, um, makes you more aware of God's presence in the day to day. And I think it just enriches your relationship with God, you know, to do those things just by feeling closer to him and mm -hmm. um, yeah, having, having those reminders and being conscious of them, um, I think just changes your perspective of the world and, and makes it easier and easier. And like exercise, it just, it becomes easier and easier and strengthens your prayer life overall. 
Yeah. You know, I'm glad you brought up exercise because I'm, I'm asking myself, and this is totally hypothetical and or rhetorical, but, you know, we've talked some about quantity versus quality of your prayer time. Like, mm-hmm. so this is just sort of a, um, a mind's game. I don't think that there's an actual answer to this question, but, you know, like, which is better to pray for 20 minutes straight or to pray, you know, throughout the day for 15 minutes, you know, doing 30 second prayers at a time. Well, I don't think you can answer which is better. I think it's both are very important. But, you know, when you talk about exercise, I feel like sometimes there are people who will hit the gym for their hour and then be totally sedentary the rest of the time. Mm hmm. Or there are the people who are kind of like always on their feet, plus they do a little bit of of extra exercise. Well, you know, her husband counting steps, like, I mean, he got in great shape from just increasing his steps in the day, you know, Uh little by little. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like in the exercise world, there are so many just parallels that we can draw Mm -hmm. because no, you don't want to just say, oh, I did my half hour of aerobics for the day. Now I'm just going to sit for the rest of the day. (laughs) You know, like they're, they say now it's this, you know, phrase like sitting is the new smoking, like being sedentary is that bad for your health, Mm -hmm. you know, but also you don't want to just say, well, I have an active lifestyle, so I don't really need to exercise ever at all. You know what I mean? Like, I really do feel like a healthy prayer life is going to have both. It's going to have praying throughout the day, and it's going to have time set aside for prayer. And that doesn't mean that every day is going to look exactly the same, you know, but, and I feel like they both feed into each other. The more you practice these habits of just praying somewhat spontaneously throughout the day, I feel like the more you're going to crave deeper time with God. Mm-hmm. And then when you do carve out the 20 minutes or two hours or, you know, whatever it is, just to focus on the Lord, then it's going to make you mindful of him throughout the day. So I, in my mind, it's not an either or, you know, it, it's kind of a both and. Yeah, I know. And we, we focused on the little bits of time here and there today, but it is, I think it's definitely a great, um, there, there's a great amount of balance involved. Yeah, because I do hear some people say like, oh, I don't really need to have a quiet time. I just pray throughout the day. Right. And yeah, it's great to pray throughout the day, but that's really not an excuse. (laughs) It turns into a one-way conversation too. I think a lot of our listening. Yeah, good point. You know, I think a lot of our listening comes in that quiet space where we make white noise, you know, just, or how do you, white space, blank space? No, no. um, Silence. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. You know, it's almost like saying, oh, I don't need to go out on a date with my husband. I actually see him eat breakfast every day. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, so what's your point? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any other just like tips or suggestions? Like, especially if somebody's new with this idea of setting up prayer reminders, do you have any helpful? Yeah. Well, <laughs> just like, just like the gym and exercise, don't give up you know, don't, Mm -hmm. don't give up. If you forget, if you fall off the wagon, if you feel like it's hard to be consistent, um, I struggle with that, with consistency. And so I, I've gone through seasons of, wow, I'm great at this prayer reminder. And then I let it fall away. And then I, you know, just even doing this episode, I've thought, oh, I need to get back into doing some of these that Mm -hmm. maybe I haven't done in a while, but it's okay. Don't give up. Don't have guilt. Like we talked about before, just keep on going. And, and it's, you know, this prayer is a relationship. And when it turns into a to-do list, then it, it just robs prayer of its joy and, and of the relationship and, and what it's intended to be. Yeah. You know, that's so funny. You talked about relationship because it just kind of like triggered this analogy in my head. Like, and, and, and Jamie, it's how you and I talk because we love to have time set aside where we can like, you know, we could easily talk for two hours and the time is just going to go by. But there are also times where we're just sending quick texts throughout the day, you know, and I would not feel satisfied if our relationship was just quick texts. Right. And I also like, there are some things that, yeah, sometimes we just need to check in real quick with the text, <laughs> you know? And so I kind of feel like the prayer reminders are sort of like the quick texts. I like that. Yeah. Which doesn't replace the need for, you know, actual communication, um, 
you know, so yeah, I, I feel like a, a healthy balance of both. And the texts wouldn't really make important. sense all the time if there wasn't that foundation of that oh, time. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, you yeah. create the foundation that makes the texts more and more easy and frequent. Yeah. And some things like you just, for example, what time do you want to meet to record our next episode? That you can do on text. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some things though that just, you know, you need to actually have a conversation about <laughs> Yeah, you I know, so like, analogy. that's really good. Yeah, you know, God, please protect this police officer who's got his sirens on and is passing me. It's totally fine to do as a quick prayer reminder. You know, God, who do you want me to marry? No, that's not something you want to just, you know, ask him once and then move on with your day. Yeah. So one last tip I want to leave you with um, if you're listening in and just getting into the habit of starting prayer reminders is to keep it simple. You know, I would say like pick one thing. My tendency is always to over, um, what's the opposite of simplify? I can't even think Complicate. of the word. Overcomplicate things. I had to do that even this morning. I realized that my sort of the morning prayer routine that I had gotten into I had gotten out of. And one of the reasons was I had just added too many components to it. You know, so even just this week, I woke up with the intention of, okay, we're going to simple it down again, simplify it. So I would say, do the same thing with prayer reminders. Start with one or at the very most two things. And then once those become established habits, add another thing, but don't try to do like 10 things all at once or it just gets overwhelming. That's a good reminder. So we talk about prayer reminders and a lot of other tips just for people who are busy trying to fight distractions, trying to find time to pray in our course called Smashing Your Prayer Blocks, because we all have different mental and sometimes spiritual blocks that keep us from having the prayer life that we want or that we should have. And so this is a course Jamie and I put together. You can enroll at prayingchristianwomen.com slash blocks. We have videos, PFDs, no, PDFs, which is, <laughs> all right, we're in Alaska, PFDs. PFD on the together. brain. I do have PFD on the brain. For those of you who don't know, in the fall in Alaska, residents get, um, get a dividends check from the state's oil. Super long story. I sometimes get that in PDF <laughs> confused. Me too. So anyway, we are not offering you PFDs. You have to live in Alaska for that. We are offering you PDFs where you have um, just different exercises about prayer reminders, about connecting with God. I think there's a section on prayer journaling. There's just a lot of useful tips in kind of short chunks so you don't need to set aside a ton of time. Again, that's the smash your prayer blocks prayer course at prayingchristianwomen.com slash blocks. Is there anything else that we needed to say or add? No, I'm impressed with your tongue twisting, like ability to say that all totally enunciated. I'm, I'm really impressed, <laughs> but I think we're good for our blessing. And well, benediction. don't make me do it again. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go to our blessing and benediction. May all the words of your mouth be pleasing in the sight of God, your savior. May he set a trap over the door of your lips so that no corrupt or foolish talk will come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building others up. May your lips speak life today and may your words be sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Whenever you open your mouth, may the Holy Spirit himself give you the words to say to bless those who listen. And our benediction today is Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Amen.